If you look at the um, plan, this is the one where you can see our specific plan that is in your packets. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's okay. cool because they're going to share um, that table <clears throat> in the middle. It's a more collaborative kind of space. So if you look at the wall, um, this is where you come into administration is, is this um, wall right here. And so um, we're going to have the graphic designer and the um, creative experiences specialist, you know, who's doing programming, well, they'll work together a lot. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be able to do that across this table. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was a really neat, um, flexible plan. Nothing is attached to the wall. Mm -hmm. So it's all can be shifted yeah. at Correct. some point if, if you need to. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's just kind of the way offices are, are being designed now anyway mm -hmm. is because you just don't know for future needs. Right. So um, having as much flexibility as possible is important. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the KI design uh, in the amount of, I think you said $8,500. $8,500, yeah, I just didn't have a question. Um, a second. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Stuart, can you call the roll on that? Sure. One? Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee George. Aye. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. And Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Okay. Uh, the last discussion. Cancellation. Oh, of cancellation. Um, looks like we can um, cancel the December board meeting. Okay. Um, can I get a motion? So a motion. Can I get a second? <laughs> All in favor? That was quick. Aye. 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 Okay. The meeting is canceled. I mean, as always, if anything super comes up that has to be done, you know, we know where you live. Right. right. <laughs> Particularly you, Jenny. Yes. <laughs> super close. Oh. As we know. Um, but it's been fairly typical that we are able to cancel the December meeting. Okay, discussion items, Sunday out. Um, this is something that I know Lisa and I talked about a couple of times last, beginning of the summer, Sunday hours. And then Dan raised it too. Um, looking at the Sunday hours, this is just up for discussion at this mm -hmm. point. Um, my own, per to introduce, it, my own personal thought is that, you know, looking at when we're open, how we're dealing with people is something that we should always be considering. Are we open at the times that people need? At the same time, um, you know, recognize that we have longer hours than an awful lot of other libraries. Some of these statistics are actually collected by me. I spent some time on, you know, like, all right, who are the... Uh, you know, who are the you know, upper income suburbs across the country? And we all sort of know who they are. So I went, clicked at all along and collected, and then, you know, tried to get some peer. And then Heather actually rounded it out to make it a better sample than I put together. The one that was sort of interesting was the Ann Arbor one, because I called them because they were the only ones that had Sunday morning hours. And I huh. said, yeah. you know, what's up with that? Yeah. And they said, oh, um, and I haven't seen it, but they said it's part of a coffee shop. Oh. And, you know, like, they sort of a, you know, like, they, they have, it's, a, it's not there. I thought, oh, well, it's open in the middle of Ann Arbor because all those students, but the students mm -hmm. aren't at the public library. They're at the university library. Right. Exactly. This one is actually yeah. further out, and I think it's in a, you know, sort of a more satellite, but, you know, like, Evanston has, you know, the storefront. Uh, right on Central and the other branches on, and stuff, and this one is sort of attached to a yeah. coffee hour. And they had they had specific requests from patrons, and so they there's open there. Right, that was the only one that I saw. Um, and then Heather put together some statistics. Um, what do people think? Well, what sort of drove it is? I thought it should open from twelve to twelve. Yeah, I've always Sunday, thought twelve, <laughs> and then close earlier. And if you look at the statistics, you see that toward from about six, well, it's sort of in the end. From about seven on, it drops mm -hmm. on Sunday, which is on that second page. Mm -hmm. And then I think Dan thought it should be open in the morning. And you want to talk a little bit about it? Thank you, and thank you for putting it on the agenda. Um, you know, uh, I actually, the first time I engaged with the library, I, I for, I'd forgotten when I first moved in, I uh, emailed the board and asked if um, you could consider opening Sunday. It's it's 
um, it's the young family perspective where really it's that wonderful play space on the second floor where um, my sister-in-law uh, raised it to me and said, aren't you on the board? Shouldn't you do something about that? Um, she's got a young kid too uh, and said, you know, it, Sunday morning, especially in the winter, if you've got, you know, young kids, uh, you can't go to a park um, and there's not a lot of public spaces to go. Um, and our space is so great in those facilities, just so wonderful for young kids that having the ability to come with your kids for an hour or two in the dead of winter uh, would really be nice. Um, and the demand for, you know, like especially working parents that maybe they don't get to be with their kids in the mornings on weekdays, but they're with them on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings. Um, they're just not a lot of places to go. And so I think there's less, so for that, you know, narrow interest of using that great second floor space, um, I, I know um, I'd love to do it. You know, I, I, other young families, you know, we're all at the parks on Sunday morning. It'd be great if we could go here on Sunday mornings as well. So that's what sort of drove it for me, especially since we do have operating funds, and I, um, I'm appreciative of understanding what the fiscal impact, were we to pursue it, might be. And to my eyes, given our operating situation, it's certainly reasonable, um, and we could afford it. But I, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think sort of your typical library patron. I don't have any opinion or insight well, as to whether they'd use it as much. That's why I think during the strategic plan, while they're getting all that information, if that comes up, it'll raise a red light. If they said, well, what, what, what about Sunday mornings? Da da da. But also, one of the things after the strategic plan is done because I think Heather's and the staff are pretty uh, tied up doing a whole lot of stuff, is to actually do some uh, surveys, what we had suggested, if it comes up and if it raises up, how likely would you be to come to the library? Mm -hmm. And I think it was from 10 to 1, uh, starting 10 to, 10 to 11, 11 to 1. What is the likelihood you, that you would use it mm -hmm. and do it like maybe over three weekends and just have them, you know, not be too long, just to see if people would actually mm -hmm. come. You know, in terms of what the majority want to do, and I, and I, yeah, I think, and I think that's great. I mean, this is a great place to to kind of explore this and and to find out that again, one of the things we've talked about in terms of preparing for the long range plan or the new strategic plan is, you know, are we missing? Are we not tapping into people in the community? that might want to use the library as a resource. And there may be people that, that you just pointed out, Dan, obviously young families, others that would use the library on a Sunday morning that otherwise can't use it or, you know, or, you know right. because it's not open. And by extension, though, I would also say, as I have also been here at the library on Sunday evening sometimes after 7, maybe there's a different crowd that's coming because they can make it there at that point. And again, it may turn out that we can close early, but I also think we need to, in terms of trying to cater to the widest amount of people in the community, explore all the hours, potential hours on the Sunday to see um, if, if the early hours make sense because there's a, there's a group that we're not reaching and that Sunday late if there's another group that we're that we are reaching or that group that's, that's redundant because they could just easily be here you know before 7 p.m. so you know, yeah. I think it makes sense to look at this um, I, I, I don't I mean I don't know if I were to pick hours I don't know I mean I've always thought one is sort of late in a sense I'm sort of going like one. oh yeah one is sort of late Oh, late, uh-huh. You right. know, like going, like, I'm waiting for the library to uh, open. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the other hand, it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, I, I mean, I do think that one thing we are good at doing is getting people in the building, and, and that's something we want to do. We, that we want people to be able to come to the building, and there may be people we're missing, because we're always talking about who are we missing, who are we missing. There may be other groups besides families with young children right. that, yeah. you know... Well, and um, I, I think that's a really good point to, to think about it in terms of use, mm -hmm. like uh, different n niche uh, yeah, right. groups. Um, and I agree, like, that's why we're doing the strategic plan is that we want to find who those people are and what, you know, what's happening with these conversations and the kinds of things that people are saying. So I would say 
let, I would like us to find that information and get some data first. Right. Um, but also, I think if you're looking at hours, look at all of the hours. Right. So not just the Sunday mornings, but right. other things like we've talked about um, serving patrons with special needs, for example. Some libraries have uh, sensory times that maybe we open an hour early uh, for people who have autistic or sensory um, challenges it to invite, that's a public that maybe isn't coming to the library because it's too overwhelming or they're afraid um, that their um, child or their adult with disabilities is, is maybe will um, have a meltdown, for example, and to make it a safe place to come mm. uh, during that period of time is, cool. is something to think about. Another thing to think about is um, Saturday nights is something to think about with um, after hours programs or more cultural kinds of events yeah. if we uh, if that's <clears throat> something we would want to do uh, another thing to think about is um, you talk about families even early mornings like you know the new babies up at 5 a.m. you're ready to roll by 8 oh kind God. of thing preach <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my perspective, you know, I, I think we should investigate this, but I think we need to, we just don't know enough. We just, right. we, and we right. can't, it can't be unlimited. I mean, I have to admit, I was, when I saw the cost of an hour, yeah. I was kind of like. But that's because Sunday's over it's time, Sunday too. is time and a half, yeah. so that's. And that's a big That's challenge. a big chunk. Mm -hmm. And I think when, you, well, when you look about it and you've got 40 people in the building and it's costing that to yeah. service 40 people, then then I really do think we have to be mindful of our resources and say, okay, do we, you know, maybe we try shifting for an hour or just say, okay, we're doing an experiment for the next. Yeah. But I know it, it also, I think, you know, things like with early mornings and Saturday nights, I think we have to be mindful of the wear and tear on our staffs Absolutely. and their lives, unless it's something that, oh, if I can work on Saturday night, and my partner can watch the kids, and that's a good thing for us. You know, then I can be free a different time during the week. I mean, I think it's something you're gonna have to explore with staff. Right. I Absolutely. Think. And I think Sunday yeah. morning for staff would be incredibly difficult. It would. Um, okay. Because of religious services, right. because of child care, really it's right. really it's hard to find time. child care right. on a Sunday morning. That's a great it's point. It's family time. Yeah. The PACE bus doesn't even run on Sundays, so our right. staff that rely on public transportation. Yeah, and the, um, the metro is slower. I mean, doesn't have as many exactly. options. Exactly. And probably the same as the L. I'm not right. Sure. And the time and a half cost. I just think. Yeah, on the staffing end, it is a tremendous challenge um, for that. But it's that. something worth looking at. I mean, but, I, I think it's great you brought it and up. Also, and, yeah, and, 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 and also on the, sorry, and the, on the other side of things, again, again, I think of, like, in Wilmette in general on a Sunday night, there's not a lot that's open. So, I don't know, maybe it's a matter of, maybe people are just assuming the library's not open. I mean, But most I, places on Sunday night, a lot of things right. are open. The, the other thing, shut yeah, I mean, down time. so you yeah. know, um, almost it's, all of the patrons on Sunday nights are from Evanston. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. so, so that's the other data. issue. Okay, if, okay. if we as a library uh, decide yeah. to be open hours that other libraries are not open, yeah. then um, there is the question, then we will get a significant number of non-residents, just so you right. know that will happen. Okay, well, that's um, logical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I'm not saying either here or there. I just want, I'm just really giving you the variables. Because, you know, we, we can use other libraries, too. You know, we can go to Winnetka. We can go to right. Evanston. We can go to... But our goal is Lenny. to service primarily. Yeah, we'll met first. Right. We'll right. Like you said, like the cost of effectiveness of doing it as well. Right. But yeah, I just I wanted to make sure. I just, what I yeah. wondered is, you know, I, um, yeah, if, if there are people that aren't aware that the library is open or... But, yeah, if we end up just... And then secondly, again, if there are people that are, who are using it for Wilmette that... that yeah, so I mean, I think a survey is a good start. Yeah. yeah. So I think we can do that. So I, I think what we're hearing is... Final, if I may, and I think, well, I thanks for the indulgence. I would just say, I think um, you had, like, five really interesting ideas that I hadn't thought about before, um, and I imagine there's five more that you're aware of as a professional, right, mm -hmm. what other innovative libraries are doing. For me, like, you know, I bring my little perspective, but I think given that, um, you know, we're not resource constrained. Mm -hmm. I think it would be really interesting outside the scope of the strategic plan, which, you know, will be a helpful exercise. It'd be most helpful to me to understand 
your views and like here's the universe of options of you know all the cool things that we could be doing with sort of an unconstrained budget and if it I read it to mean you're going to need to hire more part-time staff to, to handle it but you know I, my reaction was a little different it looked cheap to me to, really yeah hey, for like the whole year so just to just to sort of un- right. based that's based on the usage. Usage. Is, is if I could understand from no, you no, at no, some no, point no. Okay, outside so of the strategic plan right. right there and is I a clear interest in exploring this topic yeah exactly and then you set up a meeting with Heather could I add set up a meeting with Heather could I add something I we don't have an unconstrained budget also I I do feel that um you know it's a trade-off everything is and it's a prioritization yeah, and we process are reducing and our levy by two and a half percent we are right and so that's and we are us. adding a few new staff which right. is a different thing but also um we still have the grade scale project in the works and i wanted to put that on your ra- uh, radar which is making sure that we are benchmarking our salaries according to our peer libraries appropriately. And that project is very close to being done, so I can give you the data when it is done so you can see. We have some catch up to do with some staff in terms of bringing them into the appropriate salary compensation grade and things like that. So in terms of financial commitment, that is gonna be an